All right, YouTube. Today I'm gonna to explain both average and instantaneous velocity to you using a position versus time graph of some object that's in motion. So to help us out, back is our little guy on a bicycle here. Uh, we're gonna let this be the object in the problem and we're gonna have him coast down a hill. So we're gonna start with this guy right here uh, and he's gonna speed up down the hill. And in this problem, we're gonna solve for the average velocity of the, the dude on the bicycle as he goes down the hill. And then I also want to solve for the instantaneous velocity at some point in time. How about at a time of eight seconds? Now, starting with the average velocity. Average velocity is given by V with a little bar over it. That line right there, bar, that just means average. And that's equal to change in position over change in time. Now, you may recognize this little change in position that's what we call displacement. Now, if you're new to the channel, you just need a refresher on displacement. Just click up here. I've got some videos on displacement that'll straighten you out. So in order to find the average velocity of our little guy from the beginning to the end of this problem, we need to know two things. The first being his change in position. And the next being the change in time. So looking at the graph, we can see the, the little guy goes from an initial position of 2 to a final position of 10. So the average velocity from a time of 0 to 12 is going to be 10, that's the final position, minus 2, that's the initial position, divided by the total change in time, that's going to be 12 seconds, minus the initial time, that's 0 giving us an average velocity of 0.67 meters per second. Now realize that 0.67 meters per second doesn't mean that the guy is moving at the same 0.67 meters per second the whole way down the hill. That's just an average. Now we could use this average velocity equation in order to get a better picture of what's happening at this time of eight seconds simply by looking over a period of time that's shorter. So if we were to look from a period of time of say six till 10 seconds, that'd be a shorter duration of time and a smaller displacement. And that would give us a better picture of what's happening in this problem, but it would still just be an average. And that's where instantaneous velocity comes in. Now the relationship between average velocity and instantaneous velocity is best explained if we're to look at what we've done so far, not through the lens of physics or science, but through the lens of math. You see, slope is given by rise over run. And any time that we're solving for average velocity, we're really just working out the rise over the run. You could even go so far as to say that average velocity is the average slope between two points on a graph. And it's in looking at average velocity conceptually that allows us to understand what instantaneous velocity actually is. See, when we started with a large time interval, the average slope along that time interval was some line that sat out here. As we shortened up that time interval, we got a line that sat more like this. And if we want to find out the speed or the velocity exactly at this instant. What we need to do is look at a line that actually falls not between two points, but rather falls tangent to the graph. So if you look in a physics book, instantaneous velocity is given as the instantaneous rate of change in position with respect to time. Really, that just means how quickly the position is changing on a graph. And mathematically, the instantaneous velocity actually follows the same equation, change in position over change in time. Except when we're talking about instantaneous velocity, this change in time is infinitely small. Now, the idea of an infinitely small change in time can be somewhat daunting, but ultimately all this means is the velocity is equal to the slope of a position versus time graph at some point. So if we want to know the speed or velocity of our little guy on a bike at this time of eight seconds, 
All we need to know is the slope of this line at that point in time. So measuring out the slope of our tangent line, we find the velocity at a time of eight is equal to the rise of our tangent line, that's three, over the run, also three, which gives us a velocity at a time of eight seconds equal to one meter per second. So really there's three ways of looking at instantaneous velocity. And when we start looking at a graph, I find the easiest thing to do is simply view velocity as the slope at any given point along that graph. And there's several conclusions that can be drawn from this. You'll notice at the top of the hill, our little guy is not going very fast. And if you look at the slope of the line right here, the slope was almost zero. As he sped up down the hill, that slope got steeper and steeper. Ultimately, that just means that the steeper the slope, the faster the guy was going. Now additionally, the slope you'll notice here was always positive. And a positive slope just means an object's moving forward. Now if we'd had our guy get to the bottom of the hill, turn around, and go back up the hill, what we would have seen was his position decreasing. Ultimately that would have been a negative slope. And that correlates to something moving backwards. And like I said, at the beginning right here, our guy was at rest. So zero slope, which is what we're seeing right here, correlates to something not moving. So this has been both average and instantaneous velocity of a little guy on a bicycle. And on that note, that's all for now.